So can we go back to results and, and how you help people get the results that they're looking for? I mean, I understand the part about helping people become or step into that high potential, but once they're there, they must set goals to reach their results, correct? Absolutely. And how do you help them along that, that path? I have a lot of great tools in my toolkit, and one of those is my experience of being an expat and coming back to repa- repatriate. And in that, having also my, my experience just in terms of what I did to transition, mm-hmm. oftentimes uh, I use tool, uh, I use several tools that help my clients gain the perspective of where they are now, where they came from, and exactly where it is that they want to go. Mm-hmm. We create a map and have a plan, and that's when we set goals. And our conversations, it's, it's a support and a perspective that I help them achieve that gets them to that next level. That's great. Sylvia, you mentioned to me a little bit ago about a, a tool that you use, something about speaking, or um, I, can't, I can't remember the exact term. It's eluding me right now, but can you share with us? Sure. This is a, it's an imagery tool that's called Visuals Speak. Ah, that's it. And it's a tool that was originally developed, an image-based tool uh, that is hands-on. They're, they're laminated images. It's not a collage tool, but it goes really deep into using your right brain and your left brain. So it's not about creating a pretty picture. It's about getting to that place where we stop telling ourselves stories or judgments and being able to clarify what it is that we really want, the type of dialogue that we want to have. It really deepens conversations. And that's it's a tool that I love to use with individuals on -on one-on-one coaching, with team members, whether they're intact teams or whether there's a new person coming into a team. It helps really deepen the conversation and amazing, really effective results. Fabulous. So let's, let's take up on that idea of just a moment of working with teams. It seems like from our discussion that a lot of the women that you're best suited to help get to the next level are working or leading with teams. Absolutely. So how do you teach them or how do you guide them to be better leaders of a team situation? Well, oftentimes women have gotten to the place that they've gotten to and going up the ladder by doing it all themselves. They are the best, they are the fastest, they are the most competent, and that's how they got there. But as managers and leaders, one of the things that we need to do is ask for help Mm -hmm. and to be able to delegate. Mm -hmm. So I help coach women in understanding where in their power they can use the power of connection and the power of self-reliance being able to ask for help, but in a, in a place and coming from a place of real intention. So they really know what is they need help with, how they're helping others help them by using their strengths and being able to really make the team a better team and giving themselves a lot less stress. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how you serve your clients and how, how you are best suited to help them. So let's talk about the process of working with with Sylvia? Well, oftentimes it starts with an initial conversation. From there, I really want to hear or get to the core of what my client is looking for, whether that's I want to get promoted or I really don't understand where or who I am in this new culture. I have, I'm working with a woman who lives in Germany who had a very strong U.S. identity, who had a business here. Once she moved to Germany, she felt completely lost. So our process is is different than if I was working for a business with a business client who is again coming from the United States. So it really does depend on what it is that they're coming to me for. So this client in Germany, she had to start almost from the beginning. Who was I in the United States? Is, do I want to define myself that way here? I have an amazing opportunity to redefine that if I want. So we do a lot of goal setting around how I want to explore the new place that I am, how do I want my strengths to come out and use my abilities in this new place, and how can I help others get to know me, the me that I really want to show. You can share with people that you're working with currently right now? 
one, I'm, it's not a woman, but it, it, he's a fantastic guy who's really in touch with his feminine side. He's, <laughs> he's from the UK, an amazing guy. He's a serial entrepreneur. He has it in his blood, but he gets unfocused. And when he came to me, he had two or three businesses that he was trying to do simultaneously. And what we discovered that he really wasn't sure where his passion lay. So after about three to six months, now it's going on to six months, I just got an email from him and he is living the life that he has always dreamed of. Yay. He's thriving. Fantastic. And that took a lot of focus, a lot of real truths that he had to come to and that I was really happy to help him get to and, and some soul searching and I love getting those kind of emails from my clients because that really tells me I, I am doing what I love to do and I love helping people and hearing about their stories. So Sylvia, tell me a little bit about how to build confidence around your communications. Well, oftentimes when foreign nationals are coming to the United States or even expats are going to a foreign country, the biggest challenge that they face and the biggest fears they have are around communication. That's how we get what we want. That's how we survive in any culture. And what we work on is understanding what it is they need to do to improve their communication. Oftentimes, if it's an expat going to a foreign country, it could be simple as taking classes in the foreign language and really immersing themselves to be understood. And oftentimes, it's also building their self-confidence understanding that it takes time to get back to that place where they had both feet on the ground and they knew where to go. Also, building a support team, finding people in your circle, in your world, in your new world, who can support you in, in whatever it is that you need to accomplish. And a lot of that comes from asking for help, which also builds self-confidence. And asking for help is the most important thing. Absolutely. I've, I've, I've got that now. <laughs> Earlier you talked about the, the kind of clients that you, you um, that make your heart sing are the ones that are ready to move to the next step. How would somebody self-identify themselves as being ready to move to the next step? What would they hear themselves thinking or what would that treadmill be that they're on in their mind that to, to get off the treadmill and get to the next step, what, do they, what would they need to know about themselves? I would say that my clients are often stuck. They like where they are, or they're a little afraid. They want to go fast, and they want to move forward fast. But they have self-doubts. They are scared. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to come off scared or stuck, especially when they're high potential. Mm -hmm. So they would come to me if they're in a new role and a new company or a new country. Fabulous. That's a great summary. So, Sylvia, w um, any final thoughts that you'd like to share with the folks that are watching today? I would just say that oftentimes when we are getting ready to go to a new place and we are full of fear that the transition is going to be a bumpy one, the best thing that we can do is ask for help, get help, and from there, set your intentions. Okay. Dream big, live big, and it'll happen. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Sylvia. How will people be best able to get in contact with you? They can take a look at my website, which is www.theintentionalway.com. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as consulting for corporate clients in the form of seminars, workshops, and speaking. And I have a, a series of workshops coming up. Great. Thank you so much for being with us today, Sylvia. Thank you, Zita. You're very welcome. And thank you for joining us today on Biz Talk with Zita. I hope that you found today's discussion helpful, and I hope to see you on the next issue of Biz Talk with Zita. Bye now.